Hi, I'm Diana Montford, the world's first transgender television journalist. And this is, of course, the Diana Montford Show. My guests are uh, Shane, whom you see on the show all the time, songwriting Shane, who is not going to sing. She's just going to talk tonight, but that's okay. Yep. And a new friend, Charlene Chamberlain, a well-known radio talk show host, uh, also a theater actress. We're going to just sit around and shoot the breeze, all of us, including you. Come on. So, uh, so talk to me. Who are you? I am a friend of Shane's, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me on your show my today. My pleasure, my pleasure. And I hope you'll come back. I would love to come back. And now tell us about your radio show. I uh, host and produce a show on a radio station called WTER, and it's a live stream. So not only can you hear us, you can see us as well, and you can log on and watch anywhere in the world. It's WTER TalkExchangeRadio.com, and my show is called Front Row. It's on Wednesday nights from 6 to 6.30, and it's all about music, musicians, the artists that make the music, and the music business. And I really like to do things that are a little bit off the beaten path. I just don't bring a band on and interview them. I like people that are doing things that are a little different. Um, a couple weeks ago, I interviewed a an, an musician and an artist that actually takes toys uh -huh. And he rips the interiors out of the toys and tricks them out with all kinds of electronics and turns them into oh. instruments. It's called circuit bending. So just things are a little bit off the beaten path. Is that like being a furry or something? You know? I don't like know. Like those people who dress in different <laughs> costumes and have sex with themselves. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably bending circuits in there. Well, <laughs> you know you can be bent but not broken. <laughs> True. <Yes. laughs> And then that led me to Shane, whom I happened to meet when I... Is she I a furry? <laughs> Does she know something <laughs> we don't be. know? I don't know. Maybe we should ask what's <laughs> under that hat. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot under this hat. You don't want to know. <laughs> I, I can talk that, honey. Yeah, I keep it under that hat. That's the joke. <laughs> There's a lot under the dress. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I oh. was um, producing a show uh, for Front Row again, and there was, there was a couple that lives in South Jersey, and they have an open mic night at their house and actually in their cool. backyard and they raise money by charging musicians to come and play and they raise money for brain trauma research and Isn't it's called cool? it's called bomber jam mm -hmm. and last last summer was the second year in a row that they did bomber jam so i was there to actually cover the event which was right. really pretty nice yeah. they had over a hundred musicians come and play and it went on for about five or six hours and uh, eddie burner who was the lead guitarist from a flock of seagulls has a business called Rock and Road Grill, and it's a huge RV that's totally tricked out, 1980s music style inside, and the outside is beautiful. It has music notes on it and guitars and everything. Wow. So he was there with his bus, mm -hmm. and so we went on and we spoke with him and interviewed him, and Shane just happened to pop in on the bus, and we just looked at each other and I said, listen, I have to interview Eddie and John. Why don't you just sit down with us? I think I want to talk to you, too. Mm -hmm. And that just started this great friendship that we have, and here we yeah. are now. Because uh, we were at Michael Ma Mike Massimino's house, uh, where, the, where the party was, and I, I knew Eddie, and someone had said, go check out that, you know, the bus. Did you right. ever go on the bus? And I go, no, that's Eddie's? And he's like, they're like, yeah, he does it all. Um, he'll supply everything for you. He'll supply a band if you want to go on the road. Go see him. <coughs> so I go up, and you said something like, how come I don't know her? Or something right. like that. I how said, come you know I don't what? know you? Yeah, yeah, and I said, I think I heard this before from yeah. you. Yeah, that's how we met. So mm -hmm. I said that to you. I said, oh, my God, this is happening again. So she's like, sit here. Do you mind if I do the interview with you? And I'm like in the middle of an interview. I just was checking <laughs> that's out That's exactly the, the what bus. happened. Because right. I'm like, where's my keyboard going to go? <laughs> if I, you know, I'm thinking of all this stuff. Where right. am I going to sleep? And yeah, but th but I, I just watched her and how she conducted herself with the interview and mm -hmm. and because th they're with a group, they're a great gun a bunch of guys. <coughs> you they know, John are Killian and Eddie Burner from Flock of Seagulls. They and, are. you know, and Mike Massimino and all yes, them. They're all good and people. Amelia. Mm -hmm. And I met her and she. I'm like, how come I don't know her? You know, because she's been around. She's around all the artists and mm -hmm. we usually you know bump into everyone. You sure. Know. Yeah. So that was really cool the way that happened. And and this is just once a year that this once a year in the summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how can they find it? 
<laughs> well, I think that it will probably be on our Facebooks. Um, I'm, on, I'm Charlene Chamberlain. If you want to come find me there, and I'm sure Shane will have it posted on hers. What's when the your time Facebook comes address? Uh, Charlene Chamberlain. Okay. C H A M B E R L A I N. Mm -hmm. Right. <coughs> Exactly. So that that's how we met. And it's really a great friendship. We found out that we have a whole lot in common. Yeah, so do we. Yeah. It's really it's really cool. I know. It's scary. And now <laughs> as Shane said before we went on, the three stooges. <laughs> Here we are. We have <laughs> many sides to these personalities <laughs> and it's that's true. You don't know what's what's gonna happen next. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the secret sauce. I, went, I smoked cigarettes, and I went downstairs, <laughs> and I didn't bring a lighter with me, and I had a, 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 a cigarette in this hand, and this man was parked out on the street, and I went up to him, and I went <laughs> asking for a light, and he looked horrified at me. <laughs> it must, that's why I said it must be a sign language for something. What did, what did that mean? We don't know what that means uptown. <laughs> and then Shane was in the ladies' room. And she le and she left her hat in there, and then we were here, and she said, "Oh, my hat!" And we had to like go back to the ladies' room and ask the person in there, <laughs> "Could you just like throw that out?" You know, is it dry here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ouch! I better bless this thing. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yes, you fit right in. Oh, oh good. Right. Thank I told you. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's well. She's been in theater like you. Um, mm. But yeah, theater actor. I like children's theater. I performed in a lot of children's oh, theater great. shows. I love that's that. Great. And I still do some commercial acting here and there, mm -hmm. some, you know, commercials. Mm -hmm. um, if my agent finds them for me, yeah, sure. I do that as well. But my first love and passion is ballet. Oh, cool. And I still, and I'm so um, grateful and happy that I'm able to do it. I still dance with a ballet company in New Jersey, cool. and we're in the middle of our rehearsals for Swan Lake. What, what's the ballet company? Ballet New Jersey. Ballet New, ballet New Jersey. Jersey. Swan Lake, which uh, I believe is the end of April, beginning of May. Yes, but this might not be shown until April. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, or maybe never. <laughs> well, how can they contact Ballet New Jersey <laughs> to find out about tickets and shows? BalletNewJersey.org. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And she also knows a pirate that lives <laughs> in Vermont that sings. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a friend for me? <laughs> Tell Maybe. him the name of the pirate. What's the name of the pirate? No, he looks like a nice guy, too. But he I'm is. Like <coughs> I have a friend that actually worked for CBS Records for many years. In my other life, before theater and radio work, I worked for Capitol Records. Cool. So I was in the music industry for many, many years wow. and have maintained um, contact with a lot of people that are still in the business. But mm -hmm. most of them, as you know, the business is really, there isn't much of a business exactly. anymore. So they've all Computers, had to kind of regroup yeah. and figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. So one friend of ours, actually, he moved to Vermont and he and his wife bought a farm and they were rehabbing, or rehabbing horses. Cool. which was pretty interesting and yeah. <coughs> he actually went to Juilliard he got a scholarship in songwriting and he is now called Rock and Ron the Friendly Pirate and he has this whole pirate show that he does but it's mostly for children and some adults come too mostly for children and he has a couple of videos out and a couple of CDs out and you know he was able to continue on with his mission and I actually talked to him a couple weeks ago and I said did you ever think after all these years you would actually be writing and performing children's music and he said no but I love it so since he's in Vermont you will see pictures of Ron on his Facebook page in his pirate costume on skis and what's <laughs> his name and how can people contact him? Rock and Ron the Friendly Pirate and it's Rock and Ron the Friendly Pirate dot com cool. <laughs> it's like he should he I was telling her I said you know he looks like a really nice guy, and, and he's got the, the CD and the way he's put together and organized. He's got this real friendly smile and mm -hmm. everything, um, and he seems like an, a really nice guy from what I've heard from Charlene. Mm -hmm. I said he, he should really have his own children's <coughs> show. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, that's a nice hook, you know? Mm -hmm. Rock and roll, the, you know. Now with the internet, right. he can independently produce it, and just he doesn't need to mm -hmm. have a station Studio. say, you, I choose mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. He right. can just do it himself. Right. Which is the way you do your show, I Absolutely. do my show, right. you know, and the way you do your albums and everything. Yeah. We are now our own producers. Yeah, technology is really, I mean, it's really wonderful for what I do, for, for what yeah. we all do. And you find your own way. Um, uh, 
your own method of organization. That's the fun part, because um, only you know what's best and, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. wh what's needed most. Um, and y and you, you hone it. It's like a craft, like anything. Right. Yeah, sure. It and absolutely is. Stay focused, get, you know, keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you end up here on the Diana Monfort show. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, if you're well, at the that's local a great thing. house, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, pick one, you know. <laughs> well, but we don't give you a bottle of Ripple here. So. No. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Ripple. Oh, darn. Boone's Farm Apple wine. Oh, Remember that's that? it. Strawberry oh. Hill. Oh. <laughs> Like deja vu. I think I've yeah. been visiting. How old are we? Summer 13? on the golf course. Are we summer thir yes. On the golf are we 13? <laughs> yeah. When no one else is there. Ooh. Right. Except interesting people. Woodstock. Right. With yes, Boone's except your Farm. boyfriend who your mother hates. And yes. <laughs> you're not supposed to, you're supposed to be there with you're your girlfriend. You're not even supposed to talk to him. Yeah. Right. But whatever. <laughs> no, actually, I was supposed to. That's a long story. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> Buford, I remember you honey I'll never forget <laughs> anyway um yeah do you have time to talk about your theater background no okay anyway uh talk about you well all right I was um I studied with Michael Moriarty uh oh. Potter's Field Company and I did uh a streetcar named Desire when I was 26 wow. I was playing Bunch and everything. wow well that's great yours is better I mean wow ballet oh. I mean come on wow but this is what makes us what they call magical because we have all these different sides and all these different backgrounds and all these things that all come together that are needed to ha be that personality mm -hmm. that right. you know uh, gets people's attention to listen to the stories that we're you know relaying to well, the you have mm -hmm. to be <coughs> multifaceted mm -hmm. or yeah. you're not interested in right I agree. So uh, now uh, your show is every Wednesday night? Every Wednesday from 6 to 6.30. Mm -hmm. And is it a uh, children's show? It's mostly geared towards adults, but, you know, I have had some youth on. I had this guitarist who's phenomenal. He can shred a guitar like, uh, I, I, I just can't even explain it. He's, he's mm -hmm. so incredible. His name's Brandon Fay, and he's a 16-year-old. Who actually goes to goes to um, goes to college? Not yet. He goes to Catholic school, and then practices seven hours a day. And he is, he is self-taught. There is a famous gay rights activist and Irishman from Ireland, a, a former monk named Brendan Fay. Wow! And when you said Brendan Fay, I said, you know Brendan. Brendan Fay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Although he's not 16, he might be a year or two older. Mm -hmm. Brandon just mm -hmm. won a competition to perform at Zappen Alley, which is a which is a huge festival in Germany. So he's going to be there for two weeks, and he will perform with Dweezil Zappa, which is I Frank Zappa's son, say, and yeah. many other musicians. And so brother of Moon Unit. Yes, and brother of Moon Unit. So this is a um, a really really big deal for him, and we're just so happy and that he's able to do it at 16 years old. Well, you got a very early start. You yeah, won a scholarship 14. to, was it Juilliard or? Uh, they gave me a monetary scholarship at the age of 14. Uh, I won a, a talent competition. Right. And it was in all, you know, yeah. all 50 states. And, um, and I won first place and was shocked. And I cut a record with Capitol Records. Uh, it was a classical piece that I won with, Moonlight yeah. Sonata by uh -huh. Beethoven. I know it. Uh, I'm not, no, Sonata Pathetique and B-flat minor, sorry. Um, and uh, then I had a, a screen test with Columbia Pictures and all that and uh, was on the Mike Douglas show. And you know Pat Delcy? Remember I Pat do Delcy know Pat Delcy. I actually had lunch with and Pat Delcy a couple months ago. That, okay, mm -hmm. I was that, that was the first radio show I did when I was like 14. Oh, wow. Now his son, uh, Dave Michaels, mm -hmm. that's small world, okay. Uh, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Getting smaller. Yeah. So that was, that was a pretty neat thing, but I didn't continue with the music. You know, I picked up music later, and that's when things were kind of changing. I was writing like crazy and honing my, mm -hmm. my skills as a songwriter, and rap decides to come in and like take over, and it's like, where are the songwriters? What's going on with the songwriting? Uh, and I just got basically fed up with the whole system that, anyway. That's what happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> I was at Capitol, and then, you know, that happened, and I'm like, you know, I. I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to take these rappers, I'm sorry, to the radio stations. It was not safe then because... Negative it, Yeah, stories. it was negative and it brought in drugs and other things that I'm mm. just so against. So, mm. you know, I just decided, you know, maybe it's time for me to 
you know, retire from that. And then Just I so went into theater for 13 years. Yeah, and now I'm back in the music industry again. That, so. you know, and all, but now it's on your terms. It is. Right. It is. So many people are coming back that have the same stories and they didn't talk about it. They don't want to talk yeah. about mm -hmm. it. No, right. it didn't happen to me. And all of a sudden now they're admitting it happened to them. Yes. Okay. So, uh, and the story's the same one, but at least, okay, you, you can't cry over spilt milk. Just that you came back and you're doing something with right. it is the main point. Like yeah. anything in life, you get up and you get back on your look, feet. Look, I, I just keep going forward no matter what it is. Push forward, keep going. Don't look back, keep mm -hmm. going. Because that's all you can really do. And in the business that I'm in now, by day, I work for a concert promoter and I handle all of their marketing and their mm -hmm. promotions. And we do concerts up and down the East Coast. So in essence, I am back in, in it, but yeah, on my own terms and I get to be creative and, and work on the projects that I want to work on now. Nobody has to, nobody's saying you have to, you know, take care of this artist right. or that artist, exactly. you know, this is what we need you to do and try and, try and figure out how to how to brand them and market them so it's good but I, if, if somebody said you know Charlene you're gonna be back in the music industry 15 years 20 years later I would have said no way mm -hmm. and right. now here it is right. so I think it's just meant to be at this point in time well do you, the only reason I'm back in the music industry is because um, I left music to go into law enforcement right. and um, had all this training and then more training and uh, in being a first responder, which mm -hmm. went hand in hand with my job, with right. state police uh, training and all. Um, and I had responded to 9-11, right. four months of that, and I was going through counseling and all types of things to deal with, you know, that the image. Trauma, and all, yeah. yeah. So my saving grace was what makes you happy? The only thing that really made me happy to find that happy spot again, because mm -hmm. everything was d grim and, and depressing, and oh my gosh, what's yeah. life, wh wh what's the use, and all this. Well, because I you saw what is the value the of life, and what you saw there. The depths of hell. Mm -hmm. You're not, there's no training for that no. in any type of response uh, program. And um, so, and it, it, it's ingrained in you. So, my uh, thing that made me happy was music, but look what music did you know for me right. and it was like now I have nothing but I was I was kind of coached into and coaxed into go back to the music and mm -hmm. um, and forget all that and just play yeah. and then I um, I was playing I got myself a piano a grand piano Yamaha mm -hmm. <laughs> like um, and then I just started playing and playing for just me and then that's when I met up with Andy Kravitz a producer and he's like so what do you got let me hear it. And what are you doing with this? How come mm -hmm. you're not doing anything? So he kind of, you know, uh, reverse psychology kind of, kind of got me to like, you know, I, you're not going to do it. That's all it takes. Yeah, I know. I, Especially you. <laughs> I know. And I and I did it. And I didn't even think about anything. And and I've been working like a dog ever since, loving it. Mm -hmm. But it's also work. It is work. It People is a don't job. Realize it's you don't just pick up a mic and I'm going to be. No. A karaoke store. Not at all. You need the stories to write the songs. Same, you need same the with life, dance. the it's hell, the, the, thing. Yeah. the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent to make those songs. You need to have so much faith. And it's a God given talent. And you have to remember that where the create creativity comes from. Yes. You know, with the creator. Absolutely. And then you can get, uh, hey, you don't have to be a success. You're already a success. If you're doing what you love doing, mm -hmm. the money comes later. Right. That's what they tell me. And <laughs> if there, even if there's never any big money, yeah. just the doing. It's about yeah. the work, as we used to it's say in acting. So it right. is. It's about the work. And for me, mm -hmm. it's about feeding my soul. And mm -hmm. whose lives did you touch that day? Yeah. Maybe it was a exactly. life not through the song in the studio or this camera. Maybe it was somebody coming up the steps or in the cab. or Right. The, you don't know. Right. I had a, when I started this show in 1990, I had an amazing experience. We did a show about uh, choice and dying. Truth, uh, in other words, uh, people do not wish to be kept alive with machines. Yes. And that was new then. It was 1990. Three months after we aired it, I was walking down the street. This 40-ish man stopped me and said, Excuse me, you do a TV show, don't you? I thought, what does this man want? Uh -oh. I thought, he's going to kill me. He's going, what is he going to do? I said, uh, yes. He said, well, I, I saw that show you did in Choice and Dying. That was what it was. Mm -hmm. Choice and Dying, and my father was, saw it with me, and then my father had a heart attack, and because he'd seen that show, he made a living will, 
and he was not kept. I almost See? died. I mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Right. That you so surprised. validates what you do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just need to have that validation to keep going. Because it is hard to keep mm -hmm. going. I know with music and, and also with dance, I mean, I have to mm -hmm. slug my body, my old body, around a dance studio. Mm -hmm. And I do that three or four times a week. And, you know, And people it's don't hard. understand what you it's do work. because those little things that come your way that you don't relate to others. That's what keeps you going. Yeah. That's the that's I think the universe's way or God's way, whatever you want to call it, of saying, You did a good job, keep going, right. thank you. I agree. Well I think you're going to stay youthful for a very long time mm -hmm. because you do dance and that is maybe the best exercise, isn't it? It's supposed to be a really great exercise mm -hmm. for you and I think it has helped me kind of maintain Give it my health. Look at her figure, isn't it? You're slim, you're gorgeous. <laughs> oh, thank Please, you. I, Thanks. I'm triced up in a girl. Flattering. <laughs> and my bust <laughs> and my stomach are like <laughs> oh. level here. Oh, stop. I, I, I should keep my mouth stop. shut. I'm showing all my flaws here. And this is with a girdle on. Hello. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, and you are slim as can be. Oh. I know. But it is hard work. I mean, uh, you know, anything and in the arts is lives. very hard work. And, um, yeah, yeah, but any kind, anything you love is hard work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, uh, I know people who, you, the first year in law school, they thought of suicide. Cause sure. It's so oh hard. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, uh, people, people who scrub floors, I'm pretty sure that's pretty hard, you sure know? Sure it is. Except they yeah. get paid very little, but mm -hmm. you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think any kind of work is hard. I, I agree with you. But I think I our compensation is that we do what we love. I right. agree, and, and I am very blessed to be able to continue to do that. Mm -hmm. Really, am as long as there are that. people around that appreciate, even if it's one person, that's all. That's all that's required. Yeah. Because other, otherwise, it's I don't know. You're what are you going to sit under an apple tree and just do fade away, <laughs> right? Well, a lot, of, a lot of people do. They, their idea of a perfect life is dropping out at good floor, twenty years old, and just <laughs> yeah. vegetating forever in front of a TV set all right. night or something. Well, yeah. th there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Or listening to the radio, that's <laughs> wonderful. Or listening to <laughs> music. Yeah, that's right true. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, but I mean, a lot of people just, they really do not want to live. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of living. They like to watch other people living, but they don't want to live. So they don't learn anything new right. every day. So they, every day just runs into the next. Yeah, I am such a curious person. I, you know, I want to go and see and do. Mm -hmm. I have to keep moving all the time. You know, I need a lot of creative and mental stimulation uh, that keeps me going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about the gypsy cab driver, the right on the way here, he's telling us about the whole world's communist, and I'm <laughs> you get a little okay, bit. Okay, so no tip for you, bud. Right. <laughs> he, but he was a nice guy. He but was very like, nice. It's funny because y you've got to be tapped into life and see all sides of it because right. It, that's the reality TV. It's live TV coming at you live. You don't <laughs> have to pay for it. You don't need a True. camera or a tape recorder. Just watch. Right. <laughs> and you take what you want. You leave the rest. But I think it's a lot of it's funny. But it's all true. So what's so different about me? I just put it all together, all the stories. <laughs> right. <laughs> Th and the other thing I think that is so important is you have to have a sense of humor. Yeah. You have to find the humor in yeah. life. You really do. I think after you're all cried out and there's no more <laughs> tears left, you have no choice but what are you going to do? You just got to laugh. Right. What's the use? Nobody's going to listen to you anyway. Right. That's just my spin. <laughs> <laughs> are you okay? Yeah. No, I'm listening. I'm <laughs> watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> I love it too. I love the great you wanna, show. I love you want to see your show? I want to see your show again. Yeah. My favorite new show. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we should all start our, a reality. I love it. I think we should. That's right, here she is. Say. She's our superstar Don't say tonight. Don't say these things to me. You have to just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us where it all started. Um, yeah. <laughs> when I was two years old, my mother gave me a pair of her high heel shoes, and look what happened. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Well, <laughs> and now I don't wear high heels. Not too late. You're skinnier than me. I don't care. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> ba -dum -bum. Um, okay, well, we have like three minutes left, so, wow. uh, yes. Now, uh, well Is that all? Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> My trip to New York. Uh, yes, but please come back. Please come back. 
Oh we the Shane and Charlene show will yes, come back. Yes. And why not the Shane and Charlene <laughs> show? On this station people have to live in Manhattan to be on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. We it might, should be like a tri-state. <laughs> yeah, no, but it should be a tri-state. They would have a great show. Look at how interesting it just was. Anyway, Thank uh, you. we're almost out of time. When is your radio show? It's on Wednesday nights from six to six thirty on WTER. Uh, TalkExchangeRadio.com, and it's called Front Row, so I hope you'll tune in. Mm -hmm. And how can people contact you if they want to compliment you on the show or follow through on something you said? Um, they can actually reach me at, um, I have a website, it's called CharleneChamberlain.com, and they can go on there and, and contact me through my website. Mm -hmm. And Shane, how can people uh, access your music? Um, CDBaby.com iTunes or Amazon.com, uh, Shane in the High Command, Songwriting Shane. You'll see me with the hat. Okay. <laughs> You'll see it's me. And There's a lot of Shanes out there now, but I have that. Right. And your Songwriting Shane. Songwriting Shane. And you can be contacted at? Uh, songwriting Shane on Facebook. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm Diana Montford. This has been the Diana Montford Show. We still have two minutes left. Go figure. Uh, anything you'd like to say to people before we go? Are we going to be quiet? <laughs> <laughs> Never. Never. Catholic Never. <laughs> oh, please, Never. yes. Oh, did you, we all go to Catholic school? Yes. No, I didn't go oh, to Catholic school. Lucky you. <laughs> wow. No. You remind me of a Catholic well school. She's then. been, you know, she's regimented. She's, you know, responsible. Well, thank happened? you. Thank Where'd you, Shane. You I don't know. <laughs> Get strict parents? I went to an alternative school. Oh, how cool I went to the, f the first alternative high school in the country. How cool and there were about, I know. it's really cool. <laughs> we, you know, for gym, we played volleyball, we went ice skating, we went bowling, we Whoa. went camping, we built a geodesic dome. Oh, Buckminster Fuller. I yeah, love Bucky. It. Yes. Oh my and God. Uh, our English class consisted of lying on the floor and listening to rock music and writing poetry about it afterwards. I, <laughs> so that's no, where the I come nuns from. Would have burned us at the <laughs> yeah, stake if we had done that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was an alternative school and it was a great education. We had astronomy classes where we would go out at night and and stargaze. And on uh, that note, you've just great. stargazed with <laughs> Charlene and Shane. And I'm Diana Monford. And even if no one else loves you, I love you a lot. And we you clapped the racers on the floor. <laughs> and that was our thrill, yeah. We came doing this. It was awful. Anyway, See I'm Diana you. Monford. Well, speak for myself. I, I, I clapped it elsewhere. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'm Diana Monford. Even if no one else loves you, I love you. <laughs> And they love oh you. Bye. Charlene Thank loves you. you. <laughs> Shane loves you. We all love you. Stay tuned for the next show. Yes. Thank Mom. you. Bye. <laughs> love bye you. Bye.